You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks for taking some time to chat with me today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so let's start off uh, real quick, just kind of giving you a quick introduction about yourself. Any, any background, relevant information you think our audience would uh, get a lot of value from? Sure. So I'm Kevin Robinson. I'm the Senior VP of Marketing for the Wi-Fi Alliance. I've been there, I guess, just at my 14-year anniversary. So I've I've been through quite a quite a good ride for Wi-Fi over the last 14 years. Uh, great place to be. And generally, what I do is I manage many of the groups that interface with our member companies to deliver the latest generations of Wi-Fi technology to the world. Fantastic. Um, so there are a number of different alliances that are connected to the IoT space, and um, the Wi-Fi alliance is, is super interesting for us to kind of talk about here. Um, I'd love it if you could just give a quick high-level overview of what the focus of the Alliance is, what you all do, and kind of the role you all play in IoT. Absolutely. And, you know, Wi-Fi Alliance isn't really broadly known, particularly in the, in the consumer space if you're not really in the industry. Sure. But, of course, the the effects of the Wi-Fi Alliance, I think it would be hard pressed to find anybody who hasn't been impacted by the work we do. Wi-Fi Alliance is the worldwide network of companies that brings you Wi-Fi. So we're kind of the who's who in the connectivity space. More than 900 different companies come together within the Wi-Fi Alliance to drive the direction of Wi-Fi and delivering a great user experience to you know, consumers and businesses mm. around the world. Right. You know, we have companies like your, you know, Microsoft, Apple, Samsung, all the big chip manufacturers all come to Wi-Fi Alliance again to drive that roadmap for Wi-Fi. Right. One of the most important things we've done over our 20 year history is manage a program called Wi-Fi Certified, which is okay. a it's a certification program that makes sure that the Wi-Fi equipment you buy works well together, regardless of vendor. You know, it's the reason why you can have a smartphone from one from one brand, an access point or a home gateway from another, and a refrigerator from yet a third vendor, right? And so okay. it's really driven the the success of Wi-Fi over uh, the past twenty years to the point where Wi-Fi is one of the most broadly adopted technologies ever like in the history of technology yeah no i mean it's it's i mean i i'd be curious to find anybody who doesn't know what wi-fi is or doesn't mention mm -hmm. wi-fi on a daily basis so um as it relates to iot there are a lot of different connectivity options in the space that companies uh, or that solutions utilize how does wi-fi from your perspective really fit into the iot landscape sure well i think that probably the, the biggest takeaway is wi-fi is the predominant technology of choice for home IoT, right? So as you mentioned, there are many technologies that are part of the conversation. Um, home environments, they're, they're going to have a multitude, you know, multiple technologies that ultimately play a role. But Wi-Fi represents the, the vast majority of connected devices in the home, and, and it has for years. Uh, but I think people kind of get it in their mind that they think of maybe the more traditional ways they're using Wi-Fi every day. But I mean, think about it. Wi-Fi is in your thermostats and your doorbells and right. your security cameras. Right. I've got it in my wall switches, right? And so um, it really is, again, the premier home connectivity technology. Um, and I think w part of the reason for that, and it makes sense, is when you think of just the term IoT itself, it's the internet of things. Mm -hmm. And Wi-Fi is the tech, the premier internet connectivity technology. Uh, right. In fact, Wi-Fi moves more than half of all internet traffic. And that's not just wireless, that's compared to wired. Over half of every yeah. packet that goes across the internet is going over Wi-Fi. Um, and it's just built on this, this strong foundation of interoperability. Yeah. You have multiple vendors you can choose from. Right. Uh, and as I'm sure we'll get into in the conversation, there's just such a robust set of tools because mm -hmm. of the maturity of the technology that you're getting from Wi-Fi that you really don't get from any other technology right. out there. Right. And we're just built to run on the internet. We're built to network. Right. Absolutely. Um, so there are two main things I wanted to talk about today um, as a focus of our conversation. One of them is understanding kind of the opportunity Wi-Fi has or presents for, for the market going into this new year. Um, mm -hmm the key trends you're seeing on that side of things. And then the other thing as I want to talk about was the halo side of it as well as what that is, how that kind of benefits the IOT space. So first let's, let's talk about, I know you guys have put some news out and some reports out around kind of key trends on the Wi-Fi side of things for 2022. Um, could you uh, briefly kind of walk through anything relevant there that you think our audience would get a lot of value out of? 
Absolutely. I think one key takeaway is that as we look forward into 2022 and beyond, Wi-Fi's trajectory just continues, you know, continues unabated. Um, right. I think, you know, as we, as you mentioned, it, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody who doesn't interact with Wi-Fi or knows, know what it is, particularly coming out of this pandemic that we've all been in. I mean, we've relied on Wi-Fi as just a critical component of our lives. And so looking into 2022, again, we expect to see very strong trends in terms of growth of Wi-Fi overall, as yeah. well as in connected home and in IoT. Um, next year, so I should say this year, in 2022, we will have roughly 18 billion Wi-Fi devices in active use. So wow. that's not cumulative shipments. That's 18 billion being used today. Um, and so, I mean, incredible numbers. And we're putting yeah. about uh, just over 4 billion devices into the market every single year. Wow. Um, and so I think, you know, in terms of trends, you're going to see those growth numbers continue. Uh, you're going to see technologies um, be technologies like Wi-Fi 6, which is okay. the current generation of Wi-Fi, uh, right. being more being adopted more strongly in new device categories like in the IoT. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got very, very good performance as well as capabilities around power saving and low latency, things that will become increasingly important in the IoT space. Right. Uh, so you can expect to see that. But, you know, overall, it's just going to be, you know, continued success for the industry and continued um, really benefits for the end user as Wi-Fi makes its way into more and more devices. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, what, to one of your points, I, this is kind of ties into the second part of the conversation here is a, applying Wi-Fi in the IoT space is super relevant, super important for our audience. Um, I wanted to see if you could kind of expand on what Halo is. Um, mm -hmm. cause, uh, and I know the focus of it is, is a lot of the focus of it, at least, is really to um, allow different IoT use cases to to be more plausible now. So, how does what is I guess uh, the, the Halo and side of things, and then how does that really apply and benefit the IoT space? Sure. So, I think most people are familiar with Wi-Fi four, five, and six, right? Yeah. And those are traditional Wi-Fi generations. Uh, they tend to operate in now. There's three different bands that the generational Wi-Fi operates in. Uh, the 2.4 gigahertz band, which is from way, way back in the days, right, with, with 11B. Uh, the 5 gigahertz band, which is really right. the workhorse for a lot of, uh, you know, higher performance, video streaming, things like that. And of course, the new 6 gigahertz band that the Wi-Fi is moving into. So Wi-Fi Halo is a really a very interesting and, and, and complementary technology to what we have with Wi-Fi 6 in that for the first time, Wi-Fi is moving into sub 1 gigahertz spectrum. And okay. what that means is you get incredibly robust links at range. Now, there are other technologies in, in sub one gigahertz, but what Wi-Fi Halo where it really sets itself apart from other technologies, uh, particularly those targeting the IoT, is its speed and range combination. Okay. So at more traditional, let's say Wi-Fi speeds, you're, or sorry, Wi-Fi distances, you're getting you know, 80 megabits per second which mm -hmm. may not sound like a lot compared to traditional Wi-Fi that's in the multiple gigabit range. Okay. But you're, you're able to do that with a much more robust link. So think about penetrating barriers. It might be, let's say you're in a home, a more traditional home construction in the Northeast, you know, brick mm -hmm. construction and concrete. Well, you're able to penetrate those barriers more. So you can have sensors down in a basement. Um, you can have security cameras maybe on the exterior of a wall and right. of course, you have that 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 barrier penetration capability. So that's kind of at the, the the closer range is it lets you do things like do a security camera, which mm -hmm. frankly do not work over other you know lower performing technologies. But then you take that take that out, take the, that range out. Wi-Fi Halo can operate out to a kilometer of range. So right. if you're talking about true sensor sensor applications, mm -hmm. you're able to get true kilometer range out of a Wi-Fi yep. technology. Yep that also has all of the great kind of foundational elements that people have come to love from Wi-Fi. It's, it's IP based. You have right. Wi-Fi security. You have all those management capabilities that kind of go along with traditional Wi-Fi. So it's, yeah. it's really unique in the, the, the taking kind of the best capabilities of Wi-Fi yep. and marrying them with some of the, what you can get out of sub gigahertz. 
Yeah, that's super interesting because I know, um, you know, as you, you look at the IoT landscape when it comes to the connectivity side of things, there are so many different technologies out there and they all kind of sort of have their own little area they play in and the use cases that are optimal for them based on what they're trying to get out of it, based on, you know, the, the latency, the penetration, the range, you name it. Um, they all kind of fit somewhere to allow certain use cases to be more optimized. And this mm-hmm. seems like it's really expanding the potential for how we think about Wi-Fi and what it can be used for, particularly as we get more connected devices and we have more um, need for for use cases that can be built or would ideally like to be built with Wi-Fi. We just kind of run into certain limitations here and there. This seems to be kind of opening the door for new things like that to be built. Absolutely. I mean, so for the first time, really, for the vast majority of use cases, you know, it's almost like the, the 80-20 or the 90-10 rule, right? Yep, yep, yep. You can you can deliver virtually any IoT use case you can imagine, yep. with exception of true wide area wide area or true mobility use cases, right? With exception of those, you can deliver almost all of the all of the traditional IoT use cases within a single family or portfolio of technologies with Wi-Fi, and that's okay. really compelling because you know product manufacturers they're used to developing Wi-Fi. They're so a lot of the the experience that they've developed. Um, those competencies of, of networking and, and internet connectivity based on Wi-Fi can now be leveraged, but it's kind of like a one-stop shop if you look at if you look at the what the portfolio from Wi-Fi delivers. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. This is very exciting stuff. I really appreciate you taking some time to kind of share this with our audience. This is, um, um, I, I'm really excited to kind of see how this really starts to play a role in 2022 and enables even more use cases and things like that. So, mm-hmm. um, one of the things I wanted to ask you before we kind of finish up here is. When we go back to the Wi-Fi alliance side of things, you mentioned it's it's might not be one of the most well-known alliances uh, that kind of play in the IoT space, but it's super important, especially with Halo now. I think you're going to start to hear about it and talk, be talk, talk about it a lot more. Um, how can our audience kind of learn more about the Wi-Fi alliance? How can they stay up to date? And then also just talking throughout the rest of this year, what do you all have planned? Kind of what's in the pipeline? You know, what can what can we be looking forward to? Mm-hmm. Well, of course, you know anyone who wants to learn more about Wi-Fi Alliance itself uh, can go to our website at wifi.org. Uh, of course, we're very, very active on various social channels, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera. So okay. kind of the platform of your choice, look for Wi-Fi okay. Alliance. Uh, feel free to connect with me on, on LinkedIn. That's where I tend to be fairly active. Um, and so you know, that's one way to, to keep up to date. Uh, in terms of you know what's, what's exciting for 2022, yep. you know, I think you're going to see continued strong adoption of Wi-Fi 6. There is a lot of really important work going on around uh, expanding uh, Wi-Fi 6 into the 6 gigahertz band through Wi-Fi 6E. So in yep. 2022, we're at that inflection point where the majority of Wi-Fi device shipments will in fact be Wi-Fi 6. Uh, so that's that's going to be exciting. You're going to see that technology uh, kind of like with Wi-Fi Halos, where they're very complementary to one another. You're actually going to see Wi-Fi 6 moving its way into more and more IoT devices because of the lower latency and just overall better experience you can get in your home network when all devices mm-hmm. are, are Wi-Fi 6 based. So you'll expect to see that. Um, and we just continue to work on a lot of really great technologies to provide better manageability of Wi-Fi devices for for service providers, for example. Um, Seamless onboarding, making it easier than ever to get an IoT device onto a network through things like Wi-Fi Easy Connect. Uh, So really the the rate of innovation in Wi-Fi is by no means slowing down. Uh, Even through the pandemic, we have been delivering technologies and programs just as rapidly as we ever have. Uh, So it's really an exciting space to watch. And I do encourage any of your viewers, just keep an eye out for for what we have in store. Absolutely. No, it definitely will. Um, We're going to do some some decent promotion to kind of get this out there. I think um, we've spoken to members of other alliances that are connected to the IoT space. And the Wi-Fi one is is one I'm glad we're getting to talk a little bit more to. Um, And, you know, Wi-Fi is incredibly popular. I think it's really interesting to learn about kind of what Halo is going to bring to the market, mm-hmm. especially as it relates directly to IoT. So we'll definitely be staying in touch, um, uh, not just between IoT for All and the Wi-Fi lines, but also I want our audience to make sure they're kind of really focusing in on what you have going on. Uh, it's super important and things that I think can really benefit a lot of these new developments and enable new use cases in a way that you know we weren't able to do before. So, so I really appreciate your time here today. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure to be here, Ryan.
Thanks, Kevin. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching the IoT for All Media Network. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell notification so you get our latest videos as soon as they become available. But other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.